So let's have a look at elliptic curve Diffie Hellman key exchange. So this method is used in, in many applications these days in order to create a key exchange. One of the reasons is because the core Diffie Hellman method itself is is can be fairly weak. So the elliptic curve Diffie Hellman method improves this greatly by adding in elliptic curve uh, of course. So the problem that we have is that how do we uh, get Bob and Alice to share a key without Eve being able to find out what that key is. So the encryption that we normally use for our uh, communications, secure communications and for file exchange, the symmetric key encryption. So with symmetric key we have a, we have a method such as AES, 3DES, which is able to use the same key on either side. But the problem that we have is that how do we pass that key from Bob to Alice? So the key exchange method is one way to be able to create a key on either side without Eve knowing what that key is. Okay, so just a little bit about elliptic curve uh, encryption. Initially, we, we have a specification for a curve and then we define a point on the curve G. After that, we create uh, typically a, a 256-bit uh, private key, a random number, and that number defines the gradient of the slope from G up to a public key value. And the public key is an XY point. So we distribute the public key, the XY point, to anybody who wants to encrypt something for us and then keep the private key uh, secret. So normally we use this within signing. In the signing process, we take our private key, we take a message, and then we encrypt that message with our private key. On the other end, uh, if someone was to check that it was us that changed, that uh, sent the message, they would then use our public key, decrypt the uh, value for the, for the hash, and use our public key to verify it. On the graph, we have a, a G value, which is an X and a Y point. So we see here that the public key and the G value are both points on the graph, whereas the private key is just a, a simple, uh, it's just a single value or a scalar. So elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman uses a method which is similar to, to Diffie-Hellman Initially, Bob and Alice create their private key keys. Uh, so, uh, Bob creates uh, DB and Alice creates DA. So these can be used every single time that they want to communicate or they could have a long-term uh, private key. So then we calculate the public key as the G value that we saw multiplied by the random value to give us the public key. Bob does the same to calculate his public key. We now send uh, the public key between the two parties. So Alice sends her public key. Bob sends his public key. Next, uh, Alice takes Bob's value and multiplies it by... It's a scale and multiplication because we have a point. Scale and multiplication with uh, a value uh, D, which is her private key which she shouldn't release to anyone. And then on the other side, uh, Bob takes his uh, private key, DB, and multiplies it by uh, Alice's public key. If you do the math now, then DB is equal to D, DQB is equal to DB times G. So we end up with DA times DB times G. And then over here, DB times QA, QA is DA times uh, G, and these are the same because of the way that the multiplication works. It doesn't matter the order that we do it in, and so we end up with the same shared key. A little bit of magic. So here's some Python code. Okay, we'll we'll create an elliptic curve, then we'll create our our key pair. So our key pair is just a random value multiplied by the G value that we're going to have. We'll then uh, show what our secret key is and our public key. Then we do a scalar multiplication of Bob's secret key times Alice's public key and Alice's secret key times Bob's public key and hopefully we'll end up with the same value. 
Obviously the values you end up with are x, y points. So our shared key is basically just the x value uh, that we take off. So in Python, that's just the zero here for the first value. Okay, so there, here's the sample run. There's the g value that we're using on the elliptic curve. Uh, there's Alice's secret key, there's Bob's secret key, those are two random numbers. And then we generate the public key uh, for Bob and Alice based on the G value and the secret keys. After that, they will both do their calculation and hopefully they'll end up with the same value. To find out the shared key, we just pop off the X value and then we end up with this. We then put that into AES or 3DES and that becomes our symmetric key encryption. Okay, so let's actually see this in real life to see what it looks like. So there are two typical curves, curves 25519 and the SEPs 2561K. So this is used in Bitcoin and it's also used in uh, Tor networks and, and it's used fairly often. Okay, so we'll give it a sample run. So we generate some value. There's the G value that we've taken. There's the secret keys. And there's Alice's public key. And there's the shared key at the end, which is the X value. Okay, so the code that we've used, we're using this elliptic curve here that has these uh, parameters uh, for our elliptic curve. And there's the G value that we're using. And then we also have a prime number so we do our, our operations mod of a prime number. This is the prime number that we're using here. Okay, so elliptic curve requires an A value, uh, a B value, a G for the point, and then N for our uh, prime number for a mod. So there are various operations that we can do. We can add two points together on our elliptic curve, but what we typically do is our scale and multiply we take a scalar value and we multiply it by a point to give us uh, another point, which is multiplied by k. Okay, so k is just the it's the gradient there. There's our key pair, quite simple. We generate a random value, we multiply a g value by a private key, and it creates a public key. So there's nothing really fancy here. It's quite easy to create the public key and the private key uh, here. Okay, so there's our... our our key pair being created here. We then display them. We do our scale and multiply when the values are exchanged, and then we end up with the same secret. That's an x, y point, and then our shared secret is just the x point. Okay, so it's a wonderful method, and it's used fairly extensively now in, in many applications for, for key exchange. Okay, thank you.